Ah, okay, so SAO Season 3 is upon us, and just like the previous two seasons, I find myself way more heavily invested in the worlds that these series take place in, rather than the main cast of characters. I mean, come on though, how could you not immediately fall in love with this A-plus cast right here? Absolutely beautiful. Am I the only one that feels that? Like, am I the only one that watched the first episode of Sword Art Online and got really excited about the premise? Full dive VR technology, being able to experience a virtual world like it was a real one, all of your senses perfectly synced up with the virtual space, and then all these players locked in by the machinations of at th that point in the series, we thought like the evil mastermind Akihiko Kayaba, and we're going to explore each of the floors of Aincrad in detail. And then instead we focus on Kirito and Asuna's love story, which is just as equally of an interesting plot, in my opinion. You know what I mean? It's, it'd be like if you went to the circus and all this crazy stuff's going on. You get to see elephants and, and trapeze artists and fire breathers, but instead you're just really focused on that half-eaten corn dog on the ground. Just like, wow, yeah, that's a really interesting thing in comparison, you know? And I think, though... The reason I keep coming back to Sword Art Online, the reason I'm even still watching it, it's season three, you think I would have learned my lesson, is I am so fascinated by the premise it introduced. Full dive VR, going into a virtual space. And I know there's been other anime that have introduced that, even kind of Digimon, sort of, but the way it was done in Sword Art Online was good because it was depicted as in the near future, the early 2020s, and then this technology was going to hit the scene. And just the way it was set up was great. It's just, don't really Really care for the main character all that much okay so today's video we're gonna be referencing sword art online and through examples and stuff but that's not really what we're gonna be here to talk about we are talking about what if full dive technology really existed in our world like you can just go buy a nerve gear and hook it up to you not worrying about you know like some crazy dude in a red hood locking you in we're not even gonna deal with those kind of problems we're talking about the other kind of problems that it would you know create in society what other problems am i talking Talking about well before we really get into it I want to set the tone for this video so allow me to pose a hypothetical scenario to you okay I want you to imagine your job for me and if you don't have a job if you're still in school then picture your school life for me whatever you do out of the house every day okay fine now even if you love school and even if you love your job even if it's not like a great job you know like I worked as a cashier at a dollar store not too long ago and I enjoyed it for the most part but there were some days that just drained me just physically and mentally and I'm sure a lot of you maybe more than others have experienced that as well uh, just a bad day a a day where you just feel completely bushwhacked by the end of it. So picture yourself having one of those days. Picture like the worst day you've had at your job or the worst day you've had at school and you're going home and you got a throbbing headache and you just feel just dead inside and you're like man I, I can't wait to just get home and just eat my dinner maybe play some video games or something to decompress and then I just gotta hit the hay because I gotta wake up tomorrow and do it all over again. You know those kind of days. But this day is a little different. Let's say you get back to your home or your apartment or or wherever and there's a uh, box next to your front door you got a delivery and you're looking at this box and you're like what did I do what did I order I'm like oh that's right I ordered that new uh, nerve gear that just came out you know a few weeks ago I pre-ordered that hmm it got here a little earlier than I expected okay new game console and then you remember all of the different advertisements that have been leading up to it in the last few weeks you know it's been all over the uh, the internet and social media and television you've seen the commercials for this they, they they freaking marketed the nerve gear as the new experience in virtual reality also just assume that in this alternate reality I'm talking about here the SAO anime doesn't exist at all you have no idea the nerve gear Argus all that stuff just exists in our world okay so you take the box into your place and you'll you know, go through it you read through all the safety warnings and the manual and everything like that and you're like this is looking pretty cool I'm gonna try this out okay before I go to bed so you, you hook everything up you get ready to go you lay down in your bed you put the nerve gear on and you're like you know I can only play this for like 30 minutes because I got to get up the next day I got to get up early I got to go to school I got to go to work so you lay down you activate the nerve gear link to start and boom before you know it you are now standing in the middle of a forest. Now let me clarify, this is the first time you've ever experienced full dive VR and it is about to hit you like a truck, okay? 
you are not just stare like staring at a screen with a forest on it it's not even like the vibe where you know the screen is right in front of your eyes and you could still very clearly tell i'm wearing a bulky headset the entire time no you genuinely feel with all the senses you have at your disposal like you are standing in a lush green forest and the trees are greener than anything else you've seen the flowers are so bright you can smell them you you can feel the wind it's winter back in your world but here it's the summer it's warm you can feel a nice breeze you look around you just dumbfounded you can't convince your is this real am i dreaming you're feeling your skin it feels like your skin you're feeling your clothes they feel like your clothes your hair your voice it's all the same Except you're just in this beautiful forest and you start to walk through it and you can hear the birds sing and all these different animals and the animals are like alien. You've never seen them before, but they look adorable, you know, and you're just walking through this forest just perplexed. There's fruit off the tree. You can pick it and eat it and it tastes like the sweetest thing you've ever had before. And then finally, finally, you walk out of this forest and it's a, like a hilltop meadow and you walk to the top of this hill and you can see in all directions around you. Okay, and you're looking. To the north of you, you see this huge city with like this giant spiral citadel, like something out of just Dungeons and Dragons or something, just beautiful. And all the little lights in the city are turning on, nighttime is about to happen, and this just giant, like just huge city. And then you look to your left and you see these huge mountains in the distance. You see a castle nestled in the mountains like freaking Hogwarts. And the sun is beginning to go down and shining through the castle and the mountains. And you're like, that looks amazingly just gorgeous. And then you look to your right and you see just a, a just an ocean with a bunch of ships and a little port. And all these ships are sailing out and the sea is also dyed orange from the sky. And then you look up at the sky and you see that, you know, the sun is setting, but there's actually two suns in the sky and there's a bunch of moons and just streaks of milky trails across the sky. And just the stars are so much more vivid. Everything is like out of a storybook. And you're like, this is, this is amazing. This is incredible. And then right at that moment, the little timer goes off in your nerve gear. Like you set the timer to play for only 30 minutes because that's all you had left. And so the timer goes off and you're automatically logged out of your nerve gear and you take the headset off and you're back in your apartment or your house laying on your bed and everything is the way it was. And so you uh, put the nerve gear down and go eat your dinner of like, I don't know, hungry man meals or whatever the hell you're eating, a power bowl dish, I don't know what you eat for dinner. And then you like, well, I guess I gotta go to bed cause I gotta go to work tomorrow. Now, this is a genuine question I wanna ask you because in the anime, it one of the most amazing things is not like Kirito's lack of a personality or anything like that, but in the anime, the thing that really blows me away is how the main characters can just switch back and forth between this virtual reality and regular reality and they can coexist in those spaces and they seem perfectly well adjusted i mean aside from whenever somebody decides to lock them in the game world for like two years and that kind of messes them up a little bit of ptsd there yeah they could be inside of alfheim where you can literally fly and you're just flying through the air and having crazy fairy adventures and it's like oh six o'clock time to log out guys see you at school tomorrow click would this be something that you think you could just, you know, learn to live with, like any any normal game? Like even a game that you've played that just blew all expectations out of the water, a game that you genuinely got addicted to and just loved every second of it. Um, would it be something like that where you'd eventually get used to it? Or do you think that this would be a genuine life-changing event for you? Like you could experience this full dive VR and you're like, my life will never be the same after what I just did, all the things, all the possibilities that exist inside this VR world. So, yeah, I want you to seriously answer that and think about that, but we're going to talk about um, different aspects of this today. Now, uh, I'm not, I, I wasn't a computer major, nor do I know anything about even really building your own PC, so we're not going to talk about how, like, the nerve gear or the amusphere would be constructed based on current VR technology or what would have to be invented. Like, I can't talk about that stuff. I, I really want to focus more just based on society, okay? But before we get to that, I just want to talk about the various, like, like safety and legal and more importantly the privacy issues that would arise if full dive VR were to exist okay so 
Upon watching SAO for the first time, I was also kind of perplexed by the fact that this nerve gear that you can just apparently go out and buy at any big box retailer, just like it's any other game console, you know, like, oh, PlayStation 4 got released, there's a midnight waiting line, here's the nerve gear, you can just take it and go home, and this new piece of video game technology basically requires you to knock yourself into a low-grade coma in order to play it. I'm like, I'm sitting there like, what happens if your house catches on fire while you're hooked up to that thing? Or someone breaks in and tries to rob you, you know? Like, that that's a kind of a big condition there. So, you know, there would be a bunch of legal battles with this, like whether or not it would be safe to even utilize this thing. But, hey, the safety issues can actually be worked around fairly quickly if you can maybe add a few extra features that just weren't shown in the anime. Like, in order to get around the whole, my house is on fire, but I'm hooked up to the nerve gear, just install like a smoke detector or like a carbon monoxide detector on the thing and then whenever the nerve gear senses that there's an excess of smoke in your house it automatically logs you out and you're back home and you can hurriedly get your you know get your pants on or whatever and <laughs> jump out the window or um i thought about having some sort of like microphone because obviously when you're hooked up to the nerve gear there's no need for a microphone because it literally sends you into this virtual world that's intercepting all the signals to your brain for all of your senses right so you can just speak normally in the game world, but you're not speaking in the real world, right? Well, you can install a microphone on this thing so that if someone is like, hey, Timmy, time to stop playing your video games and come get your dinner, maybe there's like a threshold for the audio inside of the game console, so you're playing the game, fighting an orc or something, and then like a little notification bar will show up. Like, there's a lot of sound coming out, you know, outside right now. Would you like to hear what's going on? And then you can push the button and be like, oh, it's time for dinner, or oh, my house is being robbed, or oh, my dog is barking to let him out because he has to go take a piss. All right, hold on, guys. Let's, you know, down these orcs and I'll log out and I'll jump back in in a few minutes, you know? <laughs> so you, you can get around safety issues like that. I mean, even with that being the case, there would still be a mountain of lawsuits probably on that thing. But, you know, um, let's go beyond safety issues and legal issues. Let, let's talk more about privacy, okay? Because I have a, I have a fan named Jack and uh, he messaged me about this video a few nights ago and he's like, I'm really interested in this video you're going to be doing he's a computer scientist like legitimately and he was talking about the problem that i didn't even consider like you know if this full dive tech really existed like it did in the anime it would basically be able to maybe even read your mind you know the full inputs and outputs of what you're thinking so what i'm trying to basically get across here is if you're one of those people that are really concerned that the government is monitoring all of your cell phone calls then uh you would definitely not be on board with full dive vr because can you imagine that hooking yourself up to that thing and the government would be able to read not me just what you're doing in the game but might also be able to access like your subconscious thoughts that would be a huge concern in the world i could see it now if this thing ever got greenlit and made it for commercial sale there'd be like stories all over facebook and twitter like don't try the vr the government's trying to steal your thoughts like that would be a legitimate thing that would be all over the net it would be insane right um and also think of it like the same way that uh, Google does it because if somebody is accused of you know committing a crime you know a lot of times Google will cooperate with local police and the FBI and the government and will fork over their like you know search results like what that individual that's been accused of this crime has been searching for in the last few months and if it all syncs up to like oh yeah he's been researching how to build up oh, okay yeah we can probably maybe have some evidence for him now that kind of shit so yeah the government might uh, contact Argus and be like yeah there's a guy that we think might be a might be a criminal and he's doing some really messed up things can you tell us know what he's uh thinking subconsciously that would be great you know so major privacy issues with this and this is we're not even getting into the bigger problems that it would cause society right so that's that's food for thought right there but uh moving on now i, I want to talk a little bit more about uh what reality really is Okay, and I'll try not to get too philosophical on you because I feel like that's a little bit out of my depth anyway. But um, if you were going to define reality, how would you describe it? Okay, um, or rather, I guess if that's too vague of a question, how do you know something is real as opposed to fake? That would probably be a better one because remember, we're all human beings. Well, except for the few dolphins that are watching this video. Seriously, they're on to us. If anyone's going to crack the full dive paradigm before humans, it's going to be the dolphins. So watch out for them. I'm warning you right now. You get one warning. I told you. Okay. But 
you know, we're all humans, so we all have to experience the world. So how are we experiencing it? I got an apple right here. This is a Granny Smith apple. I hate the way red apples taste. Anyway, how do I know this apple is real? Well, because of my senses, or more, you know, accurately, my body is, you know, sensing this apple in a variety of different ways through sight, through touch and smell and, you know, I guess hearing can hear an apple and uh, it's sending that information back to my brain and my brain is piecing this all together within a fraction of a second to determine the fact yeah that this is an apple matt you're holding an apple right now you can touch the apple you can see the apple you can i would bite into the apple but that would be rude to eat it on camera and then you could smell the apple and hear it and all that stuff now let's say i'm playing my vive here which the vive is a great piece of technology I, it's a great it's fun at parties you know I, I love my vive but let's say i'm in the vive put this on here and I take uh, one of my uh, Vive controllers. That's my PS stuff. That's my PS4 controller. All right. Let's say I have one of my controllers, right? And in the Vive world, there's a virtual Apple sitting on a table. And I can use the controller. I can literally, I can walk over to the table and I can reach down and I can click the trigger and I can pick up the Apple. And I can hold the Apple in front of my face. How, do, how does my brain know that that's not a real Apple as opposed to this? Well, because I might be able to see the apple, and even in the VR world, it might look very, very realistic, but I'm not touching the apple. I'm, I'm touching the controller. I can't, I can't bite into the apple, you know? I, I can't smell the apple. So the only thing I'm really, um, you know, witnessing, the only way I can really know the apple's there is just through sight, and that's it, okay? But in the world of SAO, in, with full dive VR technology, you can feel the apple the same way you would in real life. You could taste it. You can bite into it. It's all the same. And so the big question is, at the end of the day, what's the difference? Now, you could, all, you could just come to me and say, well, the difference is this grew on a tree, and the one in SAO was made in a lab with code. And I'm like, yes, that is a difference. But when it comes to the way your brain is perceiving it, what's the difference? There isn't one. If the technology is to the level where it's in the same as in the anime, and even more so in uh, SAO Season 3, because in Season 3, they're bumping it up to even more of a level where it's, like, super realistic. You know, even more so than, like, Aincrad or, uh, you know, uh, Alfheim were. You know, like, Season 3 is, like, some next-level stuff. Um, so... I think most people, even if you went up to somebody and you told them, like, you're not, you're spending all your time in this VR world. It's not real, though. It's just a bunch of code. Be like, yeah, but it feels real, so who cares, right? So I think that's the attitude a lot of people would start to have with it. And going back to my example I gave you, here's the big premise of the video. Why would you want to leave the VR world? Now, in the anime, it wasn't their choice. Kaiba deliberately kept them from logging out, so they were stuck there for two years, causing a bit of a panic. You know, it would be different if you were given the option, but I think if Kaiba didn't mess with that logout at all, if he just released Sword Art Online like a regular game, um, you know, and, and it didn't you know, fall to all the pit. Mother's Basement also did a video about this, about, it's a really good video, about talking just all the things that suck with Aincrad and SAO and, and Alfheim and Gun Gale. So I'd really recommend giving that video a watch because that, that's a great one. I've seen it multiple times and, you know, but, you know, like, if they were just given the option to begin with, though, to just roam this virtual world as they please and they could log out, I think eventually these... People, especially if you were not living the best of lives, if you were living in a shitty maybe one-room apartment with, like, no money and you were working a really crappy job and, uh, you know, that was your life, you know, why wouldn't you want to live in a world where you can literally fly or you can live out your medieval fantasies? You can use magic. You can be this superhero kind of person. You can experience you know, realms that you never thought were conceivable. It's like you don't have enough money to fly to Paris and have a nice dinner under the Eiffel Tower, but in SA, not even in SAO, but just like in this virtual world, you could do that. You could quite, like, as far as your brain is concerned, you're really in Paris. You're, the Eiffel Tower's there. You can go up to it and touch it and lick it if you want to. I don't recommend it. The, the moon in the sky, it looks beautiful. It's super romantic. You could sit there with uh, maybe a virtual reality, you know, guy or girl, depending on your preference. And you could sit there and have fun there and have a nice evening in Paris. 
and everything's awesome, but then you take off the headset and you have to go back to your shitty job working at a 7-Eleven the next day? Like, why would you just, I'm just gonna cut out the middleman, just hook me up to the IV in the hospital and just let me live there. And this isn't an exaggeration. I think after a few months of this thing being commercially available, where you could just walk into your local Walmart or Best Buy and just, one nerve gear, please, and you could just pick it up and go home and anybody can just, you know, go into this world. I think with only in a few months, there would be the beginnings of a revolution here where people would be talking about, like, my life sucks you know, I got nothing going for me in this world. I, I just want to permanently live in there. So can you please just, you know, hook me up in a hospital bed to IVs and everything? And because you can't feel anything with your real body while you're in the VR world and just let me live there. And that would cause a lot of problems, probably legally uh, through your insurance. Like, would your insurance cover that, you know? And, and maybe people might start going to their local, you know, government representation and talking about getting laws passed to allow them to permanently hook them up to this magical VR world, you know? And, and, you know, once again, it would start out really small, like a minority part of society. And the rest of society might actually think of them as, as weird. You know, the majority of the world looking at these people that are choosing to permanently hook themselves up to a video game, and they might, especially if they've never played it before themselves, they'd be like, oh my god, they must be so sad. They don't have any lives. They want to permanently hook themselves up to a game. But I think as the years go on, and people start maybe realizing how realistic this is and how there isn't a distinguishing factor between the real world and the virtual one, more and more people would continually opt to getting hooked up to this, you know? Um, and going back to my Paris example, where you're sitting there under the Eiffel Tower at night and having a romantic dinner, um, I, this comes to the point I think maybe a lot of you have probably thought of at this point, and I, I'm gonna, it, it probably has a more professional name than this. I, I'm sure I'm not the first person to bring up this issue, but uh, I'm gonna call it the sex bot paradox, because that just sounds cool. All right, so um, I'm just gonna come right out there and say it. Has anyone ever wanted to have sex with a fictional character? Well, guess what, buddy? Nerve gear? That can make that happen. It was, that was even a focus of an episode of Futurama. Remember that episode where Fry creates uh, like a, a robot version of Lucy Liu and they start dating and the professor shows everybody that, that like a uh, middle school like PSA video from the future where it's like, don't date robots because it grinds in all of society to a halt where you can just please your, your lustful desires whenever you want, however freaky way of a want you want to have it with the want. You know, that, that was the whole point, right? So, uh, yeah, that's also a major issue there, why I think people want to permanently hook themselves up to this thing, right? And so, I think this would continue through the decades until you would not, you would seriously start to see a decent percentage of mankind starting to be hooked up to these things. And then, not just regular Joe Schmoes either, not just regular civilians. What would happen if, like, somebody like a president or a dictator or somebody were to, you know, hook them up to that thing? And so, like, oh, the, the president of a nation got tired of leading his nation, so, so he's like, I'm just going to hook myself up to this thing and I can lead my own nation and they'll do everything I want because it's my own little world I created. I'm also imagining, like, that would be a much better way of handling it. I mean, there would be regular games as well. Like, if you want to live a medieval fantasy, sure. If you want to go into outer space and have a space adventure, sure, there's a game for that. But I think they should just come out with, like, an open world where it's just you and you can maybe invite your other friends like a multiplayer kind of thing and you could basically have this world however you would want it and you wouldn't have to worry about really anything you know that that would be like the default i think what most people would really want just a world unto themselves you know everybody gets to be the deity of their own little dimension okay and so this would continue until eventually, you know, after it might, might take a long time to get to this point. It might take even maybe a hundred years or something. And remember, the technology would continually improve. If people keep buying these things and keep, people keep hooking them up to it they're, and, you know, spending money on them, they're going to improve the technology the same way they do in SAO by season three. The technology is on a whole other level, like a threshold there. So it keeps getting better and better and better to the point where you might not even have it replicating reality. You might have it actually going 
going one step beyond because as humans we're limited by a lot of things like we can only see a little fraction of the color spectrum there's a bunch of different like frequencies like you can't hear radio frequencies with your human ears it's just not going to happen right um now that's not that's not a bad thing because do you really want to be walking around and seeing radio signals coming out of everybody's like cell phones and 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 you know laptops and would you like to see the wi-fi literally in the air it would just be like this this uh miasma you know like this this visible haze in the air wherever you went you know so it's a good thing but the point is humans are limited by that but if the technology on this nerve gear or the amusphere or whatever they would call it by this point keeps improving it would give more important more people an incentive to go in and in fact you know very much unlike the anime the more you spend in this virtual world the more you come out of it into our world you would see it as a vastly different place I could see hooking yourself up to the Amusphere for like a few days coming out of it and the world that we live in might as well be black and white and dull compared to the vibrant colors of like Alfheim. It's not a great game, but it's very, you know, aesthetically pleasing to look at. You know what I mean? So yeah, stuff like that. I mean, there's people in our society that already get way like just into video games. I'm, I'm going to use World of Warcraft as an example. Is World of Warcraft still a thing? I tried to get into it for like two weeks, but uh, it's not really for me. But there's people that get way obsessed with World of Warcraft to the point where they're just like in their rooms at all time, just glued to the computer monitor playing it. Can you imagine it on the kind of level that Full Dive would give us? There'd be way more people way more that would become obsessed with these games to the point where just like a lot of people that get into like certain video games like wow you know if they're super super into it they would get to the point where they start to not being able to distinguish fantasy from reality now this doesn't happen to that this isn't like a common problem but the people that get really 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 obsessive about video games you know the kind of people i'm talking about right now they take it to a i mean there's playing a game for like eh, i've played a game for a few hours i'm gonna put it down and then there's like being completely obsessed with a game and they really get into it they can experience that phenomenon where it actually gets starting to become harder and harder for them to distinguish one from another but the numbers would be shot through the roof with this freaking thing you know they, it would go to next level where it would be like you're walking down the street like going to get some groceries and you've been playing your freaking nerve gear for the last you know day or two and it's like you you start to see like orcs and stuff attacking you in the city street like oh oh what what's going on so it would get to the point where it's like you gotta choose you gotta choose for your health you gotta choose to either live in this world or in this one right and i'm just thinking more and more people would probably pick this one, right? And so if these trends were to continue and we did eventually get to the point in this hypothetical reality where the majority of human beings, like over 50% are either, you know, hooked up to this thing or opting to be hooked up to this thing, then we can basically get into the matrix argument from there. But no, seriously, like, in The Matrix, Morpheus talks to Neo about sort of, like, the history of The Matrix, right? Because The Matrix that Neo is living in his whole life, um, it, it's like an imperfect world. Like, there are still wars, people still die, there's still, like, car crash victims and stuff. He's like, if this is a computer simulation, why would the computers bother to include all of that stuff? Where, you know, there's still suffering in the world and all that stuff. And Morpheus' ex Morpheus's explanation to that is... The computers did create a, a matrix before the current one where basically everything was like how I'm setting it up, like in the full dive VR. Like it was absolutely perfect and everybody's, all their needs were taken care of. But apparently there was like a glitch in the system where at one point there was a disaster that occurred. And because the humans living in this perfect paradise had never experienced a disaster before, this one little glitch happened, and that freaked them all out, and they, they just died right there. Like, they're all, the, all their stock, their livestock just perished there. So they had to redo the Matrix to make it so it wasn't perfect. And that led to the current world that, you know, Neo lived in, right? That lived to that Matrix, right? So, like... It, it might actually get to that kind of point later down the line because once the majority of humankind is hooked up to full dive VR, it no longer becomes like, oh, you know, some people of society like to do that. We'll just let them do it and not a big deal. No, then it starts to become a serious concern for the continuation of the species because, you know, once you're hooked up to full dive VR and you're having sex with Nico Robin on a nightly basis, um, you know, you're not having kids anymore. You're not having actual kids. The population is going to begin to stagnate, okay? So it might get to the point where it's like, you know what? You know what? Screw it. 
screw it. The, the, you know, let's just, everybody just gets hooked up. We'll provide the necessary arrangements and we'll get like robotic nurses and everything to care for your needs. Somebody has to empty out the freaking bedpans and take care of your, your matter and, you know, hook up the IVs and everything. But let's just make it so everybody's just hooked up to these things and the human population is effect is effectively going to end, but we'll spend the rest of our time living in uh, peace anyway. You know, I, I, they might come to that conclusion in this hypothetical world we're talking about. I also liken it to uh, the movie WALL-E, you know, where WALL-E goes into space and he sees all the humans and they're all like super fat and they're just floating around and there's all their modern conveniences are taken care for them by computers and robots. You know, they don't even have really any kind of like direct interaction between each other anymore. You know, it, it might kind of lead to something like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, you, you get to a certain point unless they started figuring out like cloning technology you know like to clone the humans but what would you do with the clone humans it might get to the point where it's like because so many people are hooked up to vr you know the world starts to become kind of left behind like no one wants to care for it anymore no one wants to keep all the cities you know running and everything all people care about are just whatever is necessary to keep the full dive running to keep you in this world all people start to care about and people, you know, that were at the beginning were like, oh, you can't do that. It's you have to live in the real world, not the virtual one. Those people have been completely snuffed out at this point, And everybody's just like, no, screw it. We just want to live in this in this paradise for the rest of our existence. And that's how we want to do it. And, you know, going beyond the selfishness of just saying, oh, well, I I don't like the way my current life is going. I just want to live in this perfect world. No, seriously, think about all of the advantages that full dive can give you. Uh, you know, beyond just living out your medieval fantasy to slay a dragon or something. Let's say you're an elderly person who is in like their late 80s or even my grandfather just turned 96. Um, you know, he's going to be 97 this July. And, you know, he has some health problems and he doesn't get around so well. How cool would it be if full dive VR existed and I could hook that, you know, I could put that on my grandfather and he could be like, reliving his youth and he could go back to being in his 20s and he can run and he can do all the stuff that he used to do but he can't anymore how cool would that be how cool would it be for um a paraplegic somebody that's paralyzed that's in a wheelchair or an amputee someone that's missing an arm to put on a headset and literally experience their arm again like they're they have it and they could do whatever they want they could fly they could do whatever they want you know, I also thought about it being useful for, like, training for certain professions. Of course, if everybody's hooked up to the damn thing, you don't really need to worry about it anymore. But, like, things like um, like uh, uh, brain surgery, like a doctor, a surgeon could put on the nerve gear and do the most lifelike surgery possible. But there's no risks involved because it's all just a simulation, but it's the best simulation out there. So there'd be a bunch of different uses for it. But I think if this level of technology was just left unchecked and you could just get it and hook yourself up to it, um, I think more and more people would just become disgruntled with their lives in the real world and they would want to be hooked up to this one. Uh, there's always maybe a way you can impose certain restrictions on it, like maybe there's an age restriction on the nerve gear when it first comes out, so nobody over the uh, nobody under the age of 18 can buy it. Because can you imagine like a little kid with a nerve gear? Like they would definitely never want to leave, you know. And during their development years, that could maybe actually mess them up in a serious way if it's like this completely different reality they're jumping into. So maybe there could be like an age restriction, but I don't really think there's any way around it if. VR existed the same way it did in SAO, and then, uh, yeah, people would just want to be stuck there, and they could live in their own castles, and they could have their own sexual fantasies, whatever that might be. At the drop of a hat, they can eat the most delicious food, food even more delicious than anything a human chef could create. A computer could figure out the perfect sequence to just fire off your taste buds. It's a good freaking apple. It's the end of the video now, so I can eat. Don't blame me. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much the entire video. Um, I've been throwing around this idea for a while, so I, I really would like your feedback on this, how I did. Um, you know, going into a topic like this, I'm always a little bit concerned because I'm, I'm not a philosophy major. I don't know a lot about different, like, paradoxes and everything, so it's very possible the things that I mentioned were, you know, maybe articulated a little bit more, uh, you, know, you know, a little bit more. I can't even articulate it in a little bit more of a well-done way if you like your articulation like a steak, well done. Um, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm just trying to look at this from, like, more of a layman's perspective. You know, what would it be like? So do you think the world would go the way that I think? You think if the nerve gear existed the same way it did in the anime, we'd eventually just be set down a path where we're all just hooked up to machines? Or do you think 
do you think humanity would um, be able to live with it the same way that we could live with modern day video games? Like, you go home, you hook up yourself to the Nerve Gear for two hours, and you play some Half-Life 3, because it'll probably be released by 2065 or whenever, you know? Um, and then you can just take it off and go eat your dinner and go for a jog and just live your life just perfectly fine like the characters in the show do. I think it's not very likely, but maybe you think so differently. So let me know below. This will be Teching 101 signing out. And by the way, are you questioning whether or not you're in a real world right now? <laughs> Have fun with that paradox while you fall asleep tonight. Later, everybody!